Hey everybody, it's Pokeloss, and welcome back to Toy Story. I'm going to be doing three chapters in this episode, so I better get to it. Where we last left off, we gave the baby monitor to these army men that we freed, and we're listening in on Andy's birthday presents. Just in case you forgot why, it's because if there's a good present out there, they could be replaced, and nobody wants to be replaced. Trust me, I know. <sighs> Anyways... At first, there seems to be no presents that could possibly replace them, but then there's a surprise present. What could that be? Red Rider BB gun, maybe? We're gonna have to find out, but first of all, we have to hide all the toys. Because if Andy sees all these living toys, he's gonna freak the hell out. So we have to quickly get everybody into the toy box of hell and play dead, and hopefully he doesn't notice that his toys are living, breathing, talking monstrosities of mankind. You know, the more I think about it, how did we write down all these objectives on a net sketch I mean, that's quite amazing. I don't see any lines connecting them or... Oh, okay, to the level. Alright, so we start off the... Oh my god, 150 seconds. I just murdered Mr. Potato Head! Oh, oh god, oh god. Okay, first of all, you want to make sure that Mr. Ham... Mr. Ham, what am I... Um, anyways, you want to hop onto those blocks up there to get those bonus stars. There's also the robot guy here. I don't even know what he's from, but... You want to just make sure you get all the bonus stars, because if you miss a bonus star, you're not going to be able to get an extra life at the end of the level, and that will not be very good at all. And Rex is up on the desk for some odd reason. I don't know how he even got up there. He can't climb because he has small arms, but he got up there anyways, and he's wreaking havoc amongst the table, and I don't know why he's doing that. But anyways, I just have to get those bonus stars, and I'm hopping over here to let you all know that Ham does not actually pass up on this weird pump thing, and the robot does because he's an asshole or something. Whew. Okay, I gotta breathe for a second. Rex is really slow, so you don't really need to worry about him too much. He still passes it up, because apparently all the toys are just dicks to Woody. They want to make it as hard as possible for them to get in the toy box. What exactly is that pump for? Pumping up those weird balloons? Those things are just full of flies anyways. Why would you even do that? Okay, yeah, thank you, Ash Sketch. I would have never guessed I'm going over here. Anyways, up here is this wrestler guy. I think his name's Rocky. He doesn't look like Balboa at all, but oh well. Just so I let you know that you should never, ever, ever get rid of those left blocks. Always destroy those right ones. Because he takes a long ass time to walk all the way back to where he's supposed to go if you knock down the left ones. Anyways, he's going to be pushing this bucket out of the way for RC. And RC is going to be able to drive under the bed, which is all the way to the right. And yes, that crane is going to lift up the bucket and will allow us to get the rest of the bonus stars of the level. You know, this level does seem quite quick, honestly. Like, you have to speed through it. But honestly, if you know what you're doing, it's not that troublesome. You'll end up with, like, 30 seconds left on the clock. And probably the only big thing that's a problem is some of the toys are really slow. But Anyways, after Rocky gets under the bed, all you have to do is play dead, and the level is over with. Yes, it is extremely easy, and Woody is so... Whoa, wait a second, quit dancing! Andy's coming in any second! Okay, get your hat and stop dancing, Jesus Christ. Okay, as for the next level, we find out that Woody got knocked under Andy's bed for some reason. I don't know how that happened, but... Ooh, what's this? Check out the legs on that toy. Oh, yeah. Who is this strange and mysterious legged toy that we're seeing? Oh, Woody, asking the new toy's butt questions isn't really going to help you. Oh, oh, hold on, who is that? That's Buzz Lightyear, look at that. He's a spaceman. He's from a whole bunch of weird letters and stuff that I don't understand. A gamma quadrant. I think that's something to do with geometry. Okay, so he's from a circle. And... What? What? Woody's actually kind of disturbing looking in there. He's laughing at him, but... All the other toys kind of believe that he's a real spaceman. And apparently a race is needed to settle if Buzz is real or not. Huh? I, I don't understand how a race would solve laser envy, Mr. Potato Head, but if that's your solution, then I guess we'll do it. Welcome everybody to Ego Check. This is apparently a race against Buzz. I'm going to give you guys a hint that isn't at the bottom of the edge of sketch board. This isn't really a race. It's fixed. You'll see what I mean, but honestly, that hint they're showing you about the hooks and stuff, you're going to want to remember that, because this is one of the few levels where using those hooks is pretty much the only way you're going to get through this level on skate. There's one other level that is like this, and 
Oh boy, that level. We'll get to that later. Anyways, as you can see, there are sharks that are flying out of nowhere, and Buzz is actually hopping his way over to the end of the level. I'm gonna let you all know that Buzz just hops up whenever you pass a certain spot in the game. You're not actually racing him, so you could like spend five hours just chilling out in the beginning of the level and he'll still be in one certain spot. There is our first checkpoint of the entire game, actually. Whenever you hit that flagpole, a little cowboy hat pops up because apparently Woody has this weird hat fetish. There's just hats everywhere, extra lives, checkpoints on his head. It's, it's actually kind of disturbing. Anyways, there are a lot of checkpoints in this level because they apparently thought that people were too stupid to actually use the hooks, like what I'm doing right now. I was doing terrible there. But yeah, there's a lot of checkpoints here. It's really easy. All you really have to do is make sure you don't get attacked by jumping clowns or sharks. I didn't even know sharks and clowns were in the same kind of habitat. And I didn't know they hunted the same either. I guess clowns would jump up and impale any birds with their hat to eat. At least that's what I learned from this game. This game is very educational. Yeah, there's not really much else to talk about other than the scenery. There was a little Sheriff Star health point there by the helicopter. It's really no point in getting it because you'll just get hit anyways. Um, yeah. This level is probably one of the more boring ones to actually look at. There is, in fact, a watch on the wall. A giant watch on the I. Your guess is as good as mine about that. But right here is probably my favorite part of this level. At one point, I guess the developers or the level designers were just like, fuck it, and they just threw a whole bunch of hooks in unison and you have to swing on them like George of the Jungle. It's actually quite fantastic, it's kind of fun to do. This extra life right here is really hard to get without hurting yourself. I managed to do it right there, trust me, I did not expect myself to actually successfully get that extra life without hurting myself in any shape or form. Actually, to be honest, if you fall off this level, you will bounce, just like Buzz. You will get hurt, though. You're not invincible like a magic spaceman, and you never will be, so just th throw those dreams away, because that's not going to happen. Anyways, we're just about over with this level. Thank God, because I'm getting kind of sick of seeing this looping room go over and over and over. Seriously, how big is this room, anyways? Buzz gloating on the bed, he's like, I'm gonna get laid, you're not, cowboy. He doesn't care, though, he's just happy that he made it and didn't get murdered. After that amazing race, we have finally proven to Buzz that we do, in fact, have laser envy. Yeah, that was the rules, wasn't it? Whoever wins doesn't have laser envy? And the other one, I don't even know. I didn't even pay attention. All I know is that Buzz is looking away from Woody's sad, pathetic eyes as he's just standing there in handshake motion. And actually, Buzz is so depressed by us that he, in fact, jumps off the bed and kills himself. Or at least that's how the original short ended before they made a full-length movie. Citation needed. Anyways, he actually apparently dives down on a ball? And then he gets attached to a plane... And what? That doesn't make a lick of sense. And then he gets stuck in midair for some... No, actually, it says he made a perfect landing. But by that screenshot, it shows that he got stuck in midair by some weird gravity manipulation, I guess. It says all the toys are cheering for him, but they're just looking up there like, Dude, that screenshot doesn't make a lick of sense. And I'm agreeing with him. This is really weird. See, even Woody's like, Dude, what is going on here? He's just facepalming. He's like, Buzz, you're stuck in the middle of the sky. Stop that. And I'm, and I'm just, I'm done. What is happening with this game? I don't understand it. You know what, Woody? I agree with you. I need to take a sleep or something. Wait a second. Nightmare Buzz. Wait, a huge Buzz Lightyear with real lasers? Well, wait a second, this does not happen in the movie. What is, what is this that just sketch talking about? Can I can I shake my screen and, like, get that off there? Because that's not supposed to happen. Uh, I'm doing it, it's not... Uh, okay, I guess reversing Nightmare Buzz now. You don't want to be in the way when my laser goes off. Welcome to the first boss of the game. Yes, I did say this game does follow real close to his original story. This is not one of those moments. As you can see, I'm attacking these weird fireballs spiraling around Buzz like some weird heroin-addicted planets or something. And Buzz is invincible until you destroy all those fireballs. 
I will explain what those giant planets up at the top of the screen are. You see, now that he has all those fireballs gone, for some reason that lowers his defenses. And every time you hit Buzz when he's trying to teleport away from you, you destroy a planet. Apparently there are only four planets in the universe and they all have rings. And after you defeat the Nightmare Buzz, you successfully deleted the universe. It's actually a very strange topic. I don't know why they included this in the game. I don't think it was addressed in the original movie. In fact, that doesn't even make sense. If you defeat your nightmares, you can truly destroy the entire universe. It doesn't matter because we beat Buzz and apparently he's crapping out a lot of stars. I don't know how that makes sense. I have never shot out a supernova before in my life. I'm kind of jealous. I think I have supernova diarrhea envy. Not laser envy though, that's just ridiculous. Yes, this is one of the few levels where it's almost impossible to get all the bonus stars and unfortunately that leaves Woody without a hat, but we do have a new password. I think the passwords are always the same. You always get them after you defeat one of the bosses. Well, I successfully threw all my friends into a giant hell toy box, raced the spaceman, and killed a giant demon spaceman covered in fireballs, and successfully killed everything in the galaxy. And my brain is full of fuck. So I think it's about time I stopped playing this game for about a few months and just process what just happened. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If I feel masochistic enough, I will put up the next episode very soon. I hope you all enjoyed. Tune in next time.